Welcome to Lock and Low 2018, everybody. I uh, want to say thank you for coming out to celebrate 15 years of War Machine with us. So, a uh, show of hands, who has been here playing uh, War Machine with us since the beginning? Wow, that's a lot of you. It's good, it's good. How many are uh, brand new to Lock and Load this year? All right, nice. All right, thank you for coming, thank you. Um, so we've got a great three days ahead of us, and uh, we've got lots to show you in this keynote. Lots of cool secrets to be told, minds to be blown. Um, and so now I'm going to turn it over to uh, two of Privateer's many wills, Mr. Schick and Mr. Hungerford, and they will take you through the rest of this presentation. Thank you. Yay. Hey. What's up? You're so far nice. away. You are. You're really far away. I miss you already. This is awkward. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> it's, just, it's not right if I'm not close to you to co-host. Yeah. Well, it's okay. How are a wonder twin powers going to activate? Between every video, we'll come down here and hug. Oh, okay. yeah. no. That's not... That's where the projector is. They don't need to see that. Welcome to Lock and Load, everybody. How that's you doing? Right, yeah. Th this is the keynote. Th this we, is we're just going to hug on stage for an hour, and oh. that's it. Oh, dear. The new faction is oh. love. Hey, sort of. No. <laughs> There's a lot of definitions. Welcome to Lock and Load 2018. Uh, we are in a new location this year. Um, we have three levels of action going on, so we're really looking forward to uh, the new venue, what it brings to us. Uh, we have a couple of refreshment stations that are going to be set up for you guys that you can use throughout the day. That'll be pretty exciting, I think, as we move forward. Uh, we've also got the Hobby Lounge on the third floor. We've got the RPGs on the third floor. We have... Iron Arena, Arena and on Kid Kingdom on the second. And Kid Kingdom, which is awesome. And then, of course, we have our store and our main hall with all the tournament action that's going on right after the keynote down here. So if you get lost, there's a reg desk, uh, but really it should be pretty easy to navigate, I hope, and we're looking forward to not having to make a big walk to get back to our rooms to grab whatever we forgot. Speaking uh, of the store, who's excited to get a Crucible Guard Army box? Woo! Who's excited to get a Vulcan? Yeah. Who's excited to get another Dracodile? Yeah. You're my people. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we've got an exciting keynote for you guys planned out. We've got a lot of things to show. Uh, exactly. So here we go. We're ready to do this. Yeah. Uh, big thing that we want to talk about first, uh, as you notice from the video, Monster Apocalypse, which I'm super jazzed about. Ten years ago, I started the company. Ten years ago, we launched Monster Apocalypse. It's been ten years. We're launching Monster Apocalypse again as a hobby miniatures game. I painted my Defender X. It was super exciting. I think I'm complete as a person now. Um, you have children. Yeah, they can do it. You know what? My kids are not are not pearlescent red and, and blue, okay? If they'd come out looking shiny like Iron Man, I'd be all in. They didn't. They have suits to build. When they get there, they'll have my love. Heart, harsh but fair. Yeah. All right, so with that, we wanted to take a moment and we wanted to uh, throw out of the keynote, we wanted to show you guys what to expect from the first wave of Monster Apocalypse, which is going to take the year. Uh, so we have a little video prepared for you where we're going to talk about all the cool things coming for the game's relaunch. And hopefully you guys really dig it and get as excited as we are about it. So, Tony. Do you like big robots? And do you like big monsters? And do you like it even more when your robots fight your monsters? That's Monster Apocalypse. Monster Apocalypse is a miniatures hobby game where you control a gigantic monster battling over a huge city, destroying your opponent and smashing them all over the place. Body slam each other into buildings, you try to capture strategic power points. Effectively, everything you do is to do awesome stuff with your monster so that you can knock your opponent out and be standing victorious at the end over the rubble. This is monsters and robots punching each other. You really can't have a Monster Apocalypse without big, scary monsters. So, of course, the monsters are really central to the entire experience of the Monster Apocalypse. They're there to cause the most damage to your opponent's forces. You want to do a body slam? You're going to need your monster. You want to throw your opponent through a building? You're going to need your monster. While your monster is doing most of the destruction, your units are securing the city to generate power and abilities 
for your monster. They're what's gonna allow your monster to get the edge up on his opponents, basically by capturing buildings, securing locations and strategic points that give you additional power to use for those sweet attacks that are gonna get you a leg up on the damage game. So buildings are a very unique part of Monster Apocalypse. You take them in your force, and if you control them during the game, you can gain special abilities or extra dice. But you can also use them to cause maximum havoc to your opponent by maybe throwing their monster through one. When you're building a force of monster apocalypse, the first thing you've got to do is pick an agenda, which is going to be defenders or protectors. Now, protectors are trying to save the city. They're trying to save humanity. They're the good guys, mostly. It's the destroyers. They want to blow up the cities. They want to kill the people. They want to take down the earth. They're here to lay waste to everything. So Monster Apocalypse starts with six different factions that are split into the two different agendas. So there's three factions in each agenda. One of the coolest things about Monster Apocalypse is how you can mix and match factions within the agenda to create your own supergroup. Do you want to mix Martians and Lords of Thule? You can totally do that. Do you want to have giant robots from Guard meeting with giant dinosaurs from Pterosaurs? You can also do that too. Planet Eaters are these comet-based creatures that have flown down to Earth after receiving a transmission from space, and they want to eat everything. What's a giant monster game without invading flying saucers and creepy Martian dudes abducting people? The Martian Menace is all about speed and draining power from the Earth. Lords of Cthulhu are these otherworldly beings coming in, being summoned up by cultists on Earth themselves, trying to destroy the entire planet and just devour everything. They want all the people on Earth. They want all the resources on Earth to go away, and they want to reform Earth into their own personal playground. The Guard are the real good guys. We're talking high-tech, giant robots being piloted by a team. They've got tanks, they've got helicopters, they've got everything we've always wanted to use to destroy gigantic monsters. Shadow Sun Syndicate is basically a corporation that is privatized saving the world. These guys have advanced biotechnology. They're able to inject humans with this kind of nanite stuff that basically allows them to grow to super sizes and gives them awesome ninja powers. If you're a fan of kaiju, pterosaurs are really gonna speak to you. We're talking giant lizards, giant reptiles, breathing fire, wrecking stuff. They are a very classic giant monster. If you like big T-Rexes, that's what this faction's all about. To dive into Monster Apocalypse, you first have to answer one really important question. Do you want to destroy stuff? Do you want to protect stuff? Once you've decided that crucial question, grab the starter set for that agenda. This is going to give you everything you need to play. It's going to give you a starting force with the monster, some units. It's going to give you all the dice you need. It's going to give you the map, the rule book, the cards, the tokens. Everything's all in that box. Once you have your core force from your agenda starter, you're ready to start expanding your force. And you can do that by adding new monsters to the mix through monster expansion boxes. You can also add new units, all drawn from your agenda and the three factions within them. I'm really excited to get these Monster Apocalypse models, get them painted, get them on the table, get them in a display case, because they are beautiful. You basically get to take these awesome sculpts and turn them into your own creation. I think what's really gonna be interesting is seeing the players, when they get a hold of multiple factions and start painting them to be a cohesive agenda. Tying the Martians together with their Cthulhu, or tying their pterosaurs together with their Shadow Sun. One of the biggest considerations we had when designing the game was to make it feel like an actual kaiju monster smashing movie. Two giant monsters battling over city, knocking skyscrapers and buildings over, while swarms of tanks and airplanes are zipping by, fighting everywhere. Piloting my own amazing mecha robot, blasting things with lasers, blowing things up. High action, high octane, adrenaline rush, punch em up, brawlerific attack game of mass destruction. Play Monster Apocalypse, it's dope. All right, so hopefully you're all very excited to get your hands in your own starter. I can't wait to get Martians. They are so my jam. They are very cool. No, not Shadow Sun, I said Martians. I don't know, Shadow Sun's pretty cool too. Yeah, I mean, they are. Ninjas, they grow, everything's cool. That's the problem, it's all so... Well, well let's find out, I mean, we've got the two agendas, so oh. in this room, who's a protector? Oh, the Earth is doomed. <laughs> the Earth is screwed. The Earth, the Earth oh. is screwed. Right. How, many how many destroyers are in the room? 
We're, we're not okay. We're not okay. We have some undecided. We might be able to push them one way or the other. You know, <laughs> the undecided people are the people in the buildings that are getting knocked that's, over. That's true. Look, when the evacuation signal comes through, if you don't leave, that's your fault. <laughs> So we got some more stuff to talk about Monster Apocalypse real we fast. We do. So we talked, uh, we talked a bit about what the game is, is coming and how you get started playing the game. But one of the things, of course, we're really big at Privateer Press on. Uh, one of the things we love is community, building community around our games. And so uh, we have some specialized folk in the office. Who, uh, Me. Yeah. <laughs> who are very dedicated to creating awesome in-store opportunities and events for all of our games. And we figured we'd give him five, five minutes or so to uh, wax melodically about what he has coming up for us for the rest of the year. I only need three. Oh, three? Yeah. <laughs> you have five, so I guess get the Ooh. jig out. All right. So I want to talk about Monster Apocalypse, organized play, and then some other cool organized play coming up for War Machine later in the year. But the Monpoc stuff is really cool because we're getting to do new things we didn't do with War Machine and Hordes. Specifically, there's two organized play uh, events launching with Monster Apocalypse. The first is Crush Hour, and that is sort of the steamroller for Monster Apocalypse. It's the tournament packet. Every prize kit of Crush Hour comes with a resin building. This is going to be an alt sculpt of one of the buildings you can buy. So the first one is going to be the Privateer Press HQ, which is a replacement for the corporate headquarters. You can use multiple buildings when you build your city. So winning a tournament over and over again gets you a prize you can use over and over again. There's also going to be foil stat cards. So the more you play, the more cards you're going to get. For if you're not looking at tournaments, we're also going to have a league that launches. And the cool thing about leagues is they're going to come with custom maps that are completely playable in Crush Hour and any Monpoc event you go to. I just want to point out that that big red spire, that's a volcano. You can throw monsters in it. It's amazing. <laughs> so the first league is the Island of Annihilation. It's a nice little uh, beach resort. It's got some four-star hotels. I mean, who doesn't build a beach resort next to an active volcano? I mean, they thought it was a nice like uh, tourist attraction. Yeah. They were wrong. Mm. It erupted. So everybody that plays the Island of Annihilation League gets one of these maps. It's yours to keep. You play the league on it, and you get to walk away with it. And this has specifically been built to work with the agenda starters that will be coming out in the beginning. So very exciting stuff for Monster Apocalypse. If you're looking to play in your stores, there will be things for you to play and events to run at day one when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about War Machine Hordes for a second. New masters, new champions are coming Monday? Question mark? <laughs> So we have everything getting ready to launch. The new Masters and Champions and Steamroller will be coming out next week. We're going to shoot for Monday, but we're also all going to be here at Lock and Load tearing it down. So please excuse us for one second if it's a couple days late. The new season of Steamroller is going to start. The new season of Iron Gauntlet is going to start after we announce our world champion here. We have a sweet new trophy for the Iron Gauntlet. Uh, Dallas, would you grab that and hold it up to the room? Oh, he's going to put it on. The new Iron Gauntlet trophy... As long as you don't snap your fingers, we're okay. ...is an actual Iron Gauntlet you can wear. So as soon as lock and load is over, all the Iron Gauntlet points reset, and if you're looking to get an invitation to the next lock and load or the next World Championship Finals, now's your chance to start. If you're not a tournament player and you like some of the more casual things, uh, recently we put out a set of all the alternate history casters. I don't know if everybody saw those go up on War Room and we saw a lot of people playing with them. Summer Rampage is coming up. And uh, part of Summer Rampage is going to feature you playing with the alternate history casters. But there are three factions that did not receive alt history casters because they weren't ma made back in the day. We're going to fill you in on uh, a little bit of alternate history. So what happened... What happened if when the Convergence uh, asked Nemo to join and he said no, they took him anyway? <laughs> what happened if when Bethane had been captured by Arcadius, she never got free, he took her uh, shard out and then rebuilt her? And what happened if when the Harbinger died at the temple, the Grimkin got her soul first? So you're going to see rules for these three new casters, and of course you'll have all the previous ones that existed, and Summer Rampage is all going to be about a little bit of a time warp, playing with some things that never quite were. After Summer Rampage, we've got another big event coming up this year, Longest Night. This Halloween, if you want to dress up in costume, bring some candy, and get yourself the most terrifying patch we've ever made, you can get yourself Holden's Screaming Face to put on your army bag. 
So that's the uh, overview of all the organized play coming up soon. I think yeah. we've got some other things we're going to talk about next. Though. Well, so one of the most important things, uh, you know, in the hobby, and the, one of the things that we all enjoy, and the reason that we have somebody to make an amazing Iron Gauntlet like our P3 Studio team, is that we obviously have a hobby game. Uh, two years ago, we launched a big initiative called P Formula P3 Presents. Um, since that time, we've been doing all kinds of videos, live streams, get your pan on every Thursday. We've been doing Friday tutorials, uh, P3 Presents. So we've been Clapped out piece of shit. Come on now. Ha! Now he gets it. Okay. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Now listen up, because I only got a minute. I got a secret. Privateer Press has a brand new super secret miniatures game coming out next year. Yup. Riot Quest. Riot Quest. Riot Quest. Check it out. Whole world's been turned into a smoking heap. Big cataclysm or something. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Point is, loads of loot all over the place, ripe for the taking. As long as you got a chuffin' ace crew like us. And we got a chuffin' ace team. See, there's me, Bamfest. Well, you'll see soon enough why they call me that. We got an explosives guy, Gubbin. He might be a few cards shy of a full deck, know what I mean? But good at blowing stuff up. Then there's the hoity-toity Drafus. Sorry, Sir Drafus. Gets on everyone's nerves, but that mucker can smash. And my favorite, Dez, who walks softly and carries a big stick. If by softly you mean shouts a lot, and by big stick you mean a super-powered rocket bazooka. Last but not least, there's Eris. Think she's the big boss. More like the big boss. Alpha, have you seen the interdimensional transponder? Bollocks. Look, we got our quirks, but if there's one thing we're good at, it's wrecking face, getting paid. Guess that's two things. Doesn't matter. We get paid. But we're always looking for new talent to join our crew. You're the type to shoot first. Don't ask too many questions. Dreyfus. Then run with us and grab all the loot you can carry, and we'll live like kings in this post-apocalyptic dump we've been left with. Bamfist, what the hell are you doing? Are you trying to gate in a stalker? Oop, sorry, gotta go. Riot Quest. Riot Quest. <laughs> Okay, well, that cat's out of the bag. Yeah. That is the weirdest P3 video we've ever shown. I know. What was that about? Yeah, so big exciting news. We have a new, brand new tabletop miniatures game coming out next spring. Yep. It is called Riot Quest. R Riot Quest? Riot Quest. Riot Quest. In Riot Quest, uh, you take a small team of individuals, uh, typically eight to 10 models. They create your crew. You can choose any models to be on your crew. Uh, it's then a 4v4, uh, two to four player battle royale. There's a whole lot of death, there's a whole lot of destruction, there's a whole lot of respawning. Uh, it's super fun. You get to grab loot, all kinds of stuff. What am I missing? It's Take, take a post-apocalyptic setting. Yeah. Then take a, a hex-based Combat arena skirmish scavenger mm -hmm. um, gear upgrading uh, game of insanity. Mm -hmm. Add super sweet miniatures to it. Tell me more. And then smash your friends as hard as you can and get rich. Playfully. Playfully smash. Play playfully. Do not playfully. actually smash your friends. But this yeah. is going to be a game unlike anything we've made before. This is a completely new venture for us, and yep. it does not play anything like War Machine or Hordes. It doesn't play anything like Monster Apocalypse. It's a completely new miniature system coming you out. You can play about three games in an hour. Once you get the system down, you start going really fast. Uh, there's rotating scenarios. It's a chaotic. I kind of compare it to a lot of 
crazy multi-online player first-person shooters where people are just getting fragged left and right. They're popping in at spawn points, and you're causing more destructions. You try to grab all the treasure you can. Uh, it's an amazingly fun time, and we're working on it right now. So there's going to be more information going forward. Uh, but hopefully, as we get closer to that, um, you'll get to see a lot more of the gameplay, a lot more of the characters. You're going to see old faces. You're going to see new faces. Uh, Boom Howler's now sporting a Gatling gun because, yeah. of course, he would. Yeah, he's super sweet. <laughs> <laughs> he, he blows stuff up real good. Yeah, Eris is uh, looking a little ragged. She's uh, been doing this for a long time now at this uh, point. You know, she tried saving the world once. It didn't work out. She now, failed now she's real bad. Getting paid. So, Riot yeah. Quest, uh, like I said, it's going to be coming out next spring. We're going to be dropping more information along with model previews and all that as we get closer to fall probably. Um, so, you guys are the first to see it. You now know it's coming for next spring and can start to get hype about living in a very different Iron Kingdom's world. And I can finally talk about it without using the keyword anymore. That's true. We can no longer talk about delicious candy. Yes. <laughs> For those of you following, so Mark III was egg roll. Yes. And, and then we had taco. There was taco. Then Mom Pac was cake. Yes. And Riot Quest is candy. Yes. If there's nothing we love at Private Press more, it's food. Yeah. Now, but... You said something about a P3 video. I did. And that wasn't it. No, it and wasn't. I love Dallas. Tony's been thoroughly lashed for his mistakes. D I love Dallas deeply, and I'm sad yeah. that he's not on the screen. Oh, so can should, we, we, should we solve that? Yeah, can, can, we, we, solve that? can we get so, some more Dallas in our so life? We can. So really quick, uh, again, like I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted, Tony. Uh, P Form BP3, we've been really pushing forward on the initiative. They just wrapped Season 2. Season 3 is coming for the Friday uh, P3 Presents. So they're going to be showing a whole lot more new techniques. Um, I'm really pushing Dallas to do one on how to do uh, metallic colors um, because I think it's huge. Just do it! Just do it! Stop complaining and do it! It's, it's literally your job. It's important! <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there's a whole lot of great content. Every Thursday you can hang out, chill, talk about the creative process, talk about the world with Getz and Seacat when they, when they guest star with Dallas. It's a really good time, and you get to learn a whole lot watching Dallas in a master paint, or Brendan, who uh, often guests when Dallas is not available. Um, also, the, get your, uh, the form of the P3 Presents videos, they're all technical. They show exactly how to do stuff. They show you the mixes, all that. So we really encourage you to check that out if you haven't subscribed already because it's amazing and you just get to hang out with our really cool studio crew and get to know them better and their thought processes. So with that said, let's get a little more Dallas. Action. For more in this series and additional information on the P3 Hobby Line. Cut. That's a wrap. Thunder showed you how to paint to make it more funder. But there's so much more to do from the Formula P3 Hobby Crew. P3 presents to get your paint on to brush blend those washes on. Thursday and Friday at 10 a.m. Grab your brush and grab your friend. Who? Who is that? <laughs> learn from me, learn from him, learn from Danny and Jordan. Just gonna make people up. You just, you gotta, gotta make the rhyme happen. Privateer Press. Formula P3. Get your pain. One of my favorite things about Formula P3 is you learn that your coworkers have so many hidden talents. Like, who plays the harmonica? Danny, oh. like a champ. I didn't realize the paint studio was such a magical place to work. Oh, man. It, it is just candy land down there. Apparently. I mean, up in the dev office, you know, we just work. Dallas? I gotta be honest. I'm joking. I work right next to the dev office. <laughs> we don't do anything. 
We have the the point cost dart dartboard. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. It's right there. It's right next to the CID submission file. <laughs> You're awful people. <laughs> So we've talked a lot about some of the you know, new games coming up, Monster Apocalypse. We've talked about Riot Quest. We've shown up how you can paint miniatures for all of these games. But the thing that really you know, started War Machine or started Private Press was War Machine and Hordes. And obviously, mm -hmm. a lot of people are probably here to learn more about some of the upcoming things for no. War Machine and Hordes. No. No? Just no. stop the keynote? <laughs> stop. We're done, right? Like, we're finished? That was it. No. no? So, so one year ago, uh, we started our big adventure on Theme Forces in the new edition, uh, also known as Mark III now because I can say it, and nobody can stop me. <laughs> You're the executive director. Who could before? He's right over there. <laughs> I feel safe, though, because he's trapped between some chairs, and it's really tight back there. I got a good five-minute head start. So, sometimes I forget that Matt hears what I say, and when I remember, I get really tense. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so one year ago we started Theme Forces, our big keynote last year. We showed off all of the Theme Forces that were coming for the current year. Uh, this time we want to do the same thing, so we're going to jump back into the Iron Kingdoms as they are now and uh, take a look at the big players coming into the game uh, over the next six to eight months. Yeah, about six to eight months. All right. The Iron Kingdoms were forged in the fires of war. Fighting and killing one another has been our greatest accomplishment. For centuries, we fought on freezing mountains, in burning deserts, and in the dark heart of forests. On a hundred bloody battlefields, we proved our skill at killing. We thought we'd mastered war. We thought we understood it. But war in the Iron Kingdoms has changed. Every day, a new enemy emerges, new weapons, abilities and arcane powers. They come rushing out of the deep wilderness and from across a thousand miles of trackless land. They rise from the forges of smoking foundries and creep forth from our very nightmares. Yes, war has changed. The only people who will survive it are those who can learn and adapt to this litany of new foes. Those who can't will be crushed beneath its slow grind, their bodies cast into the graveyard of history. Our land was forged in the fires of war, but now, those flames threaten to consume us all. The Feral Thorn were once the greatest champions of the Devourer Worm. Their tribes ruled the deep wilderness, feasting on the flesh of their fallen enemies in worship to their bestial god. The priests of Morrow cursed the Thorn. Their numbers dwindled, and for a time, we thought them to be extinct. Something has changed. The curse of the Ten Hills is lifted, and once again, Thorn war parties emerge from the forest to claim a toll of civilization's dead. Able to divine the strands of future and fate from the blood and viscera of her slain foes, the Bloodweaver Harispex brings the power of divination to the Bloodweavers who accompany her in battle. Her bloody fortune-telling empowers their strikes with unerring accuracy and lethal potency. Drawing upon the primordial power of the Devourer Worm through bloody sacrifice, the Harispex is able to ward herself and her companions from the lesser magics of her enemies. She empowers her sacred blade to act as a conduit for the very energies of life and death. Fervent adherence to the Devourer Worm, the Tharn's single-minded faith and devotion to their god has seen them blessed with all manner of primeval magic. The enigmatic warlocks of the Circle Orboros have learned to harness this power for their own ends. Thorn blood shamans have become an indispensable tool for the warlocks of the Circle in their ever-expanding wars. Through their connection to the Devourer Worm, blood shamans are able to greatly enhance a warlock's own natural mystic power. The Tharn twins, Bridget and Call, have built their reputation among the Tharn tribes on the backs of untold dead. Born in the first generation of Tharn after the curse of the Ten Ills was lifted and saved their race from extinction, these twins have come to embody a new hope for their race's return. A skilled hunter, Bridget has mastered the use of the heavy Tharn bow. When hunting larger game, she uses her bow to cripple and maim, allowing her brutish brother Call to finish the job with his axe. Together, the pair balances the cunning of the hunter with the brutality and savagery of the greatest predatory beasts. 
While shamans are common among the Tharn, those with the power to control war beasts as warlocks are almost unheard of. Iona the Unseen is one of those rare few, a huntress who dominates her war beasts as she dominates the Tharn beneath her banner. Of all Tharn, only the mighty Cromac, champion of the worm, commands her respect and obedience. A peerless hunter, Iona draws on the predatory aspect of the devourer worm. She grants her forces speed and stealth as they surround her enemies like a pack of dusk wolves. Iona employs clever feints and decoys and relishes the sight of her enemy's confusion as her pack slowly encircles them. Once the trap has been set, Iona draws upon her connection to the worm to lend a surge of strength and razor-keen perception to her forces, heightening her people's already prodigious bestial gifts to untold levels. Enhanced by her powers, death comes swiftly and without mercy. living scorn are masterful warriors, but even they can pale in comparison to their exalted dead. These preserved spirits are given new bodies of stone that do not suffer weakness or exhaustion. Instead, they are silent and tireless sentinels that move against the enemies of the Scorn Empire as an army of living statues. The immortal vessel strides upon the battlefield in stony silence like all its immortal kin. Wielding a powerful polearm and given life by the soul of an exalted scorn, immortal vessels are not crafted for combat alone. Rather, the souls inhabiting immortal vessels are chosen from among the extoller cast, who are skilled in the arcane arts of the scorn people and manipulation of spirit energy. This previous talent allows the vessels to act as conduits for scorn warlocks to channel their own spells through, while the vessel's inhabitant helps enhance and guide the power to its intended target. In life, the scorn known as Abadan was a fearsome warrior. Born of low caste, he rose from slavery to become one of the most feared champions in all of Eastern Imran and was preserved as an immortal companion upon his death in battle. Following his exaltation, Abadan has not missed a step. His need to fight on behalf of his house has made him one of the most active immortals in centuries. His command over his fellow immortals rivals that of even many of the most experienced extollers. At his silent command, the legions of immortals seek to continue to prove themselves worthy of their eternal preservation. Towering above the battlefield, the Supreme Guardians were originally created to guard powerful and important cities in Eastern Imran, animated by the souls of the greatest tyrants in Scorn history. Ever vigilant, these enormous constructs of stone have stood as testament to the wealth and might of those few Scorn houses who could afford their construction and upkeep. These immense constructs sweep away swaths of enemy soldiers with a single blow. Like all ancestral guardians, a supreme guardian is able to gather the souls of worthy scorn slain in battle as sacred companions. It uses their energies to empower its own devastating assault. Across the Iron Kingdoms, the Steelhead Mercenary Company trades blood for coin. Like any good mercenaries, we have little concern which side we're fighting for. Phalanxes of Steelheads have marched beneath the banners of the Nightmare Empire against the mainland and fought on every side of the wars of the Iron Kingdoms. To remain competitive in the ever-changing face of war, chapters of Steelheads constantly seek ways to improve their arsenal. Recruited from disgraced wizards of the Fraternal Order, Greylord Defectors, and even independent Arcanists who crave gold, Steelhead Arcanists bring some much-needed magical clout to our mercenary company. Beyond their own magical talents, these Arcanists can imbue the weapons of a chapter with arcane power, giving the mercenaries an edge against their more esoteric foes. When the Steelheads need some heavy firepower, they turn to the Artillery Corps. Equipped with field cannons, a cannon crew can punch a hole through the hull of a Kadoran gun carriage or stop a charging warp wolf in its tracks. The mortar crew, on the other hand, can sink explosive ordnance deep into the enemy line, where shells can do the most harm to packed infantry. But when an enemy phalanx comes too close for comfort, the volley gun can drive them back. Firing a storm of lead at close range, a single blast from a volley gun can rip enemy infantry to shreds, particularly when the gunner waits until he can see the whites of his target's eyes. In this time of uncertainty and warfare, other factions seek to arm themselves with the tools to fight back against the encroaching horrors. 
Every army in Western Immerin is now locked in a race to put forward new innovation and put out a call to war. Though the star of the ancient Order of the Wall has fallen since the formation of the Protectorate of Menoth, there are still those whose faith compels them to answer its calling. The path to mastering the martial traditions of the famed Paladins is long and arduous. To learn how to stand alone as an immovable and unshakable bulwark against even the mightiest foe takes decades to master and a faith in Menoth few possess. Thus, initiates are grouped together to allow them to rely on each other for the strength they might still lack alone. Together, these small brotherhoods become far greater than the sum of their parts, forming an unbreakable wall to repulse any who dare threaten Menoth's faithful. As a part of a Grey Lord's training, they're often sent to accompany and assist senior members as adjuncts. This provides the adjunct with significant hands-on lessons in the crucible of battle, while freeing up senior Grey Lords from more mundane tasks and allowing them to focus wholly on their critical work. In battle, an adjunct's primary purpose is to defend their mentor from enemy arcanists. Such training is invaluable to the young Grey Lord's future success. Bolstered by the powerful defensive wards of their adjunct, a commander can focus on the destruction of their foes. Bane Knights are fearsome and unholy foes, but even their murderous insanity pales in the face of the Bane Knight officer. Drawn from the cruelest and most cunning of hellish spirits in the void, Bane Knight officers matched their brutal combat skill with tactical acumen. Under their command, these void-born knights are more than a match for even stalwart opponents. The nightmares of the Wicked Harvest continue to emerge on Cain, each one more baffling and horrifying than the last. The Clockatrice is a strange beast of interlocking gears that wields time itself as a weapon, pinning the Wicked in place with its deadly gaze. It appears to be the vanguard of a new wave of Grimkin horrors, which defy description and fray the sanity of those who look upon them. The druids of the Circle Orboros are masters at tapping into the elemental power of nature itself. With rune-carved stones, they can shape and manipulate this power to create wellsprings of raw, natural force. Wells of Orboros are sacred places to the Circle, nexuses of pure power where natural magic defies physical laws. The Circle's druids can shape and wield this power to make the earth open to swallow their enemies whole and to summon forth aid in times of great need. With such dangerous foes taking the field of battle, only the strong will endure. If you want to survive the days ahead, take up arms and steel yourself. There will be many challenges ahead, and no certainty that we will all make it out of this alive. I mean... Things happened. Things happened. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot more coming, of course, that we did not show in that keynote. Just giving a little, uh, a pretty big chunk of previews. Yeah. Everything that basically was ready, we've shown. We yeah. keep no secrets anymore, nope. for, for the large part. Well, I mean, except for the, the secret of the, what the, uh, the next faction is. Uh, which I think we should skip that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I mean, who, who here is interested in finding out what the new, new faction is? I don't think they know what they're asking for. You really shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, so this is the 15 year anniversary of War Machine, by the way. We've been doing this for 15 years and there's so many great stories that have happened in the Iron Kingdoms. Yes. I mean, we've seen characters grow epic. Uh, you know, Krios got his Multiple horse. Multiple times, in fact. Scar got her boat. Yes. You know? And there's been all these like really, really amazing stories that have happened. The, the, mm -hmm. the Battle of the Castle of the Keys. Uh, Temple Harbor of Garad. Yeah, the Temple, like, Harbor Dream being slain by Vlad and being resurrected. Mm -hmm. uh, Stryker destroying Terminus's form. There's been so many like great narratives that have happened within the Iron Kingdom. Horlock coming in, slapping some druid omnipotence out of the way and saying, I got this, bros, and putting a god back into the underworld. Barnabas rising to become a demigod. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame, then. That, that the what's end, about to happen next? <laughs> Then in the end, they're all screwed. Fools thought they would never come. The 
which thought a horde of wicked minions could hold off the day. But humanity owes them a debt. And they're here to collect. So, yeah, yeah, everyone done screwed up. The Infernals are coming. And uh, if you don't know what the Infernals are, go back and read some of the old Monster Nomicons. Read up. They're probably the biggest threat Western Emeryn is ever going to see. Zero question. Zero question. If, if Turok himself decided to start just rolling around in circles all across the kingdoms, it would be less threatening than oh. the Infernal showing up. I think Turok might have a problem with this, but we'll get to find out for sure. So, yeah. So the Infernals next year, right here, lock and load, be there. <laughs> or hide, either one, it's fine. Now, you know, while Infernals are a War Machine faction, yes, we could say that... Uh, they they would, are not like a War Machine faction. They are not like they a are War Machine... Infernals. Yes. So if you're used to, you know, allocating focus or reaving fury or anything like that, uh, you're going to learn something completely new and completely different. The Infernals are going to play in a way that you've not seen in the game whatsoever. They're going to break a lot of rules. They're, just, they're not breaking any rules. They're making their own rules. Sure. They're just changing the rules as we go along. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, lots of exciting stuff coming for that, but uh, I think at this point in our keynote, it is time to forget about the terrors to come with the Infernals, and focus instead on the celebration that is at hand, which is Lock and Load 2018, the release of the Crucible Guard from last year's keynote announcement. They are here, and they are ready for you guys to pick up, play with, and we are ready to kick this show underway. So thank you very much for joining us for the Lock and Load 2018 keynote. We look forward to hanging out with you guys all weekend. We will be around. We have plenty of fun stuff going on. Be sure to check out Dallas in the studio and the Hobby Lounge, everything else. The store, I believe, will be opening momentarily. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. We appreciate it. <laughs>